ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم ما بعد عن عقبه بن عامر رضي الله عنه قال جئت الى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقلت يا رسول الله من نجا عقبة بن عامر رضي الله عنه came to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the mission and the mission is من نجا what is the way to salvation how can I save myself from hellfire that is the concern that he came with Naturally, there are so many things that you can protect yourself, but when you have the source, you want to get exactly what you want. So he went to the right source, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he asked him that. That shows the keenness of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum about protecting themselves from the hellfire and their desire for the Jannah. فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أمسك عليك لسانك. He gave him few advices. Three in this hadith. Number one, أمسك عليك لسانك. Take hold of your own tongue. Meaning, control your tongue. Make sure when you speak, you say the right thing. Just like the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Rahim May Allah bless the person who says something good and he gets rewards for it and holds back and controls himself from saying something bad and then he saved himself from the sin. <coughs> So he told him, أمسك عليك لسانك. Some people say, faith is in the heart, which is true. So how can tongue be that dangerous? The tongue can take all the faith from your heart, even though it's not part of your heart. So one word, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the hypocrites. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنْ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ آيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَعْزِئُونَ قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ One word in the battle of uh, Tabuk, the Huffad were walking with some hypocrites were there. So the hypocrites were making jokes and cracking remarks and everything and they were basically belittling the Huffah. They were saying all oh, these guys, all they care about is eating and uh, relaxing. When time to fight, they're coward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed those verses on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that these are disbelievers now. From what they said. So the Prophet وسلم, read the ayat on them, they were running after him, holding on to his mule, begging him, O Prophet of Allah, we were joking, we were joking. He said, You joke about something like that? This person holds the Quran in his heart. You make such remarks, belittling them. How can someone have the Qur'an, understands the Qur'an, and be a coward? How can someone have the Qur'an, understand the Qur'an, and be extravagant? So not only you're lying, but you're actually belittling the people. And when you belittle the people, you're actually belittling what they have. So right now, people have in vicious attack on Sahih Bukhari. 
everything they try to prove to you that Sahih Bukhari has hadith not that Sahih. <coughs> What's the point? Okay, it has four, five, ten, whatever. What's the point? What's next? You just want to make something that all Muslim united one agree upon from the time of yani righteous predecessors until now you just want to make people doubt that because your goal is Islam not Bukhari because why don't you go to Sahih Muslim and start talk about that you see so people when they speak sometimes they look like they're doing something and their intention is something else, so you can become a Kafir. So his first advice, Amsik alayka lisanak, hold your tongue, control yourself. Second one, waliyasa'ka baytuk. Second one, be content with your home. That's one understanding. Be content with your home, meaning whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, be happy with it. Don't start going, uh, you live in, uh, you know, moderate areas or uh, low areas and then you start going to mansions and homes and everything and this guy has and this guy and you're looking at people who are more rich than you. The Prophet ﷺ said, in the matters of dunya, always look at people below you. So you always say, Alhamdulillah. Because if you look at people higher than you, what are you going to do? You're going to start doubting the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did you give him? I'm better than him. How come you didn't give me? This person deserve it, this person doesn't deserve it. So you belittle the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that leads you to kufr too. <coughs> so be content with your home. That's one understanding. The other understanding, if going outside your home, you're going to cause more problems and more troubles because you can't control yourself, then stay home. Of course, brothers, that doesn't mean don't come to Jama'ah prayer. <laughs> because some people say, Alhamdulillah, just like people, you know, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, if you eat from those two trees, the onions and the garlic, then don't come to the masjid. You know, people nowadays, let's go pray, my brother. I just ate garlic, brother. You know, you're not supposed to go to the I said, all right, man, just have dinner and have breakfast and uh, eat garlic and you don't have to come to the masjid and inshallah bad intention this is not how you do it this is a punishment in fact to the people who like yani, you like to come to the jama'ah and when you eat from this you're not allowed to come to it imagine yourself that you love to go somewhere and someone prohibits you or if you do something you can't have it this tells you that because the Sahaba love to come to Jama'ah, and this is bad, when they heard that hadith, rather than eating it so they don't come to the Jama'ah, they don't eat it so they can come to the Jama'ah. And the same thing, you're a bad person. Yani, you can't control yourself, you're, having, you're causing troubles all the time. If you cannot do anything about it, then sit at home, and only come for jama'ah prayer and when there is need gathering eat and such and then after that sit at home keep your trouble away from people that's a charity that's a charity to keep your trouble away from people it is like sadaqah you do to yourself and the final one he said wabki ala khati'ati cry for your sin when you sin cry when you repent from a sin, don't talk about that sin as if it was wonderful life before when I used to be this age and that age we used to do this and you're talking about haram things. A person who repents, when he remembers the sin, he cries. He doesn't boast about it or brag about it or talk about it in a happy way. You sin, you say astaghfirullah and when you remember it, Cry for your sin because that's a proof that you feel bad and a proof that you repent or your repentance will be accepted. So three advices. أمسك عليك لسانك وليسعك ذيتك وابكي على خطيئتك
Uqba ibn Amr received three advices. Number one, control your tongue. Number two, be content with your home and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And number three, cry for your sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit from that. Jazakumullah khairan, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.